Today uh, we'll talk about uh, tenfold classification of materials. Uh, basically, these are done for uh, the insulators and the superconductors, and these uh, tenfold classification dates back to uh, 1996-97 by Altland and Zane Bauer. Uh, uh, in fact, you can uh, see a very nice lecture by Altland in uh, uh, Topological Matter School in 2017, and uh, so. We will not get uh, too much into details of this classification, but we will tell you the uh, basic things based on the discussion that we had so far on uh, these uh, time reversal and uh, particle hole and other symmetries that we talked about. So, uh, we will uh, start with this um, two main symmetries that we have learnt. Uh, one is called as a time reversal symmetry. Uh, which of course means that uh, t going to minus t and so on and uh, what it means is that uh, if a particle is made to move uh, with a velocity v in the opposite direction that is with a velocity minus v uh, whether the uh, physics remains invariant or whether the Hamiltonian remains invariant and uh, we have uh, elaborately seen the consequences of uh, such uh, time reversal symmetry being present or absent. Um, especially if they are present then uh, one has these Kramer's doublets uh, which we have done. Now uh, also we have looked at the particle hole symmetry and uh, this is uh, has been talked about when we uh, discussed uh, Kitaev chain and so on. So whether uh, a particle becoming a hole and uh, so on whether that has uh, uh, a bearing on the Hamiltonian and if it does then of course there are uh, these uh, energy uh, E corresponding to a particle will have uh, an energy uh, minus E corresponding to a hole and so on and so forth. Okay? So, uh, if you want a, a sort of pictorial representation of that, uh, so let me sort of draw a conduction band and the valence band. So, this is the CB and the VB and um, we create a, a hole here. Uh, so, there is a single hole excitation here and this will correspond to a single particle excitation here. Okay. And um, of course, uh, this is your Fermi energy. Let me draw it with a color. So, this is Fermi energy, and this is for E greater than EF, and this is for E less than EF, and so on. Okay. So, uh, this is really the particle hole symmetry that we talk about. So, there is a corresponding to an energy minus E for a, a hole excitation. Uh, there will be a particle excitation at an energy plus E and so on. Okay? And in terms of a band picture, uh, we can do it, suppose we take a cosine band and uh, the we fix the Fermi level somewhere here and uh, then uh, the particle hole symmetry would correspond to something like this. So, there is a k minus pi will correspond to uh, for a particle will correspond to a hole at uh, these uh, k. So, uh, say this is some uh, a k minus pi and this will be some a k dagger and so on. Uh, so, this is the you know the hole and this is the particle and so on. Okay. So, um, we have uh, also learned that uh, the time reversal uh, symmetry which we write it by T and the particle hole symmetry which we will write it by C. Uh, and the reason that we write it by C usually because uh, traditionally this particle hole symmetry is uh, denoted as a charge conjugation symmetry. Okay. Um, it is called as CCS and uh, I believe that uh, uh, the people uh, who work in high energy physics, they use this term more often uh, than the uh, people in condensed matter physics. So, this is called charge conjugation symmetry and that is why it is written with a C. 
so this T and C are the ones that we are uh, going to talk about and um, uh, we have in various situations we have uh, talked about how T acts on a Hamiltonian which uh, is of the form of a Dirac Hamiltonian say D dot sigma and uh, then uh, uh, how T acts on each of the components of D and how the Hamiltonian gets transformed. We have done that elaborately in the context of uh, when we did the SSH model and uh, the Kitaev model. So, this uh, T has a form which is uh, we know that it has a form like uh, a K conjugation. It is also usually written with a UK where u is a unitary operator and this k is the complex conjugation and it makes it a uh, anti-unitary operator and both c is also an anti-unitary operator. Now, this is for uh, spinless uh, fermions or spinless uh, particles and we have also uh, looked at how uh, in presence of spin this is not enough uh, to represent the symmetry. Uh, it is written as i sigma y k. Uh, for the spin full particles and uh, we have seen this uh, earlier okay uh, and uh, this sigma y is nothing but the y component of the Pauli matrix and this can be operated on a given term of the Hamiltonian and then term by term we have uh, uh, talked about how these uh, Hamiltonian uh, or rather how this uh, symmetry operation transforms. So, uh, now, this uh, T is equal to uh, the square of this is equal to plus 1 uh, for spinless particles and so on. Okay? I am just trying to remind you of all the properties that we have done and uh, this is equal to minus 1 for uh, spin full particles. Okay? Uh, similarly, P also has uh, this. Uh, so, P square is equal to uh, plus 1 and minus 1 as well. Uh, so, just like whether uh, you do the, uh, the particle hole transformation twice, uh, it will either give rise to a minus sign or it will rise, give rise to a, a plus sign that is plus 1 or minus 1. And uh, so, both T square and P square um, have values which we have learned so far is equal to plus minus 1. Now, it is also true that a system not having time reversal symmetry or not having particle hole symmetry should also uh, have these values for this t square and p square. And in that case, uh, the trivial cases where there is no time reversal symmetry or there is no particle hole symmetry, uh, then we write it as uh, t square and p square equal to 0. So, now you see that uh, t square has all these three values. So, it is plus 1, minus 1 and 0 and p square has a plus 1 and minus 1 and 0. Okay? So, if you put together uh, all the combinations. So, we can have a co consider that t square equal to plus 1 and p square plus 1 minus 1 and 0 and then t square minus 1 and uh, p square equal to plus 1 minus 1 and 0 and similarly for uh, t square equal to 0, uh, p square equal to plus 1 minus 1 and 0. So, there are of course, 9 uh, sort of uh, these things present. I mean, 9 types uh, that are present. Okay, so nine types coming from the three cross three. Okay, so uh, nine um, values for these uh, t square and p square based on these uh, plus one minus one and zero. They are present in the system, uh, but um, we have talked about a tenfold symmetric classification of materials, and this tenth one is really coming from another symmetry, which is called as a chiral symmetry, uh, which we have seen as well in uh, certain situations and this chiral symmetry um, is nothing but uh, let us write it with uh, S and this S is nothing but it is a, a product of the PT symmetry. And um, uh, now this uh, S uh, does not have values plus 1, minus 1 and 0, but S has values um, which are uh, 1 and 0. Okay. Now, it can happen or rather the tenth classification uh, is coming from uh, S equal to 1, uh, but 
uh, uh, p and t equal to 0 ok. Uh, so, for systems with chiral symmetry, so let me write it with only chiral symmetry ok and this only is important here because uh, T and P are equal to 0. So, this so S is equal to 1. Uh, so, that uh, is the tenth type of uh, system classification that we uh, have ok. So, we have uh, all these uh, things um, all the nine uh, combinations that we have talked about and uh, the last combination is P equal to T equal to 0 and so on ok. So, uh, this chiral is not a, a trivial symmetry that we can understand just like we have understood the time reversal symmetry or the particle hole symmetry. Um, in fact, uh, the chiral symmetry is uh, very apparent in systems with sublattice structure. Uh, for example, uh, you have seen a graphene, graphene has a sublattice structure, uh, it the unit cell consists of uh, uh, two atoms, uh, there are two atoms in a given unit cell and um, they are called as A and B atoms and there is an inversion symmetry with respect to the bond, uh, you know the perpendicular to the bond that connects. Uh, so, what I am trying to say is uh, these is the structure and uh, so this are, so these are A and B. So, if you draw a line here then uh, you can change uh, or you can invert between uh, you know uh, about this uh, red line and A becomes B and B becomes A. Now, since both A and B uh, correspond to carbon atoms in um, in graphene, so that is how it is uh, having a uh, sublattice symmetry and same that uh, it goes with uh, the SSH model. So, the chiral symmetry is a uh, sublattice symmetry for systems with uh, you know uh, sublattice. So, uh, so chiral in certain systems ok. And uh, which systems? The systems that have uh, these sublattice structure ok. So, it is that is how you know physically you may want to understand how uh, this classification comes about ok. So, uh, let me look at uh, the table uh, that sums up this uh, tenfold classification. Now, you see that T uh, is the time reversal symmetry C and then S. Uh, so, S is chiral. So, let me write it uh, T is uh, time reversal once again uh, C is uh, particle hole or charge conjugation. So, we can write both uh, or charge conjugation and S uh, is chiral ok. And uh, you see that uh, there are these uh, time reversal symmetry being there. So, the 1 means that it is there. So, it is either 1 or minus 1. So, that is that is how it is classified. So, 1, uh, 1 and 1. So, that corresponds to the BDI class. So, this is a BDI that is there. Then if it is uh, plus 1, minus 1 and 1 it is called CI and then it is AI and then it is uh, B3. Uh, C2, A2, D, uh, C, A, A3 and so on. This is the last class, uh, the tenth class where uh, T is equal to 0, uh, C is equal to 0 that is these two symmetries are not there. There is uh, it is not invariant under uh, these time reversal or uh, the charge conjugation symmetry, but still the system has a chiral symmetry and that is called as a A3 class ok. So, these are all these names that are you know uh, proposed. So, there is uh, uh, BDI and CI or uh, C1, A1, B3, C2, 
A2, D, C, A and A3. Okay. So, all our materials uh, including the insulators and the superconductors will fall into one of these categories and they are sort of based upon these values that you see um, appearing at the uh, columns uh, corresponding to T, C and S. Okay. Uh, S is nothing but a product of T and C. So, this is the tenfold uh, classification of materials. Of course, I am uh, presenting a, a very concise version of this uh, classification that is only relevant to us and uh, uh, will not go any farther than that. Okay. <clears throat> so, now uh, of course, we uh, get this uh, these symmetry classes, but then we have to talk about the topological invariants as well. So, that we know that which topological invariant we are talking about and uh, uh, we have uh, learnt about a number of topological invariants. So, for example, in SSH model um, and Kitaev model, uh, we have seen that the uh, topological invariant is uh, the winding number. Okay. There are you know people talk about uh, Zuck phase and so on, but all these are related to the winding number. For example, even in um, uh, systems where all of dx, dy and dz are present, uh, so that the winding is a difficult uh, thing to visualize uh, or winding about some a particular point um, in the Brill 1 zone is difficult to visualize and then one talks about Berry phase which is nothing but the uh, line integral of the Berry connection um, uh, you know over the Brill 1 zone. Okay. So, uh, it is winding number there. So, the topological invariant is the winding number. For example, we have uh, talked about uh, 2D electron gas in presence of a, a magnetic field and then uh, And uh, we have talked about uh, this and then uh, the, the whole conductivity is uh, expressed in terms of this churn number and same that goes with the Holden model. So, by and large you know whenever there is a Hall effect quantized Hall effect there uh, has to be a churn number which is the topological invariant. So, the churn number uh, sits right in front of the E square over H and uh, this C takes values which are uh, you know 0, 1 and so on. Okay. Now, uh, there are uh, something more to this I mean there are these uh, Z invariant or there are Z 2 invariant. Okay. And the Z and Z 2 invariants uh, are uh, based upon whether Z invariant, uh, the churn number is a Z invariant. What it means is that it can take values like uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etcetera. And uh, so, that is integer classification. So, this is an integer classification. And uh, this is of course, binary 0 and 1. Okay. So, 0 correspond to the trivial uh, phase and um, 1 corresponds to the uh, topological phase. So, these two are the main topological invariant that one talks about. You see Z can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 any value in principle. Z2 cannot take uh, any value. So, if you think of winding number, uh, then winding number is really a Z invariant because uh, it can take values 1, 2, etc., uh, or 0, 1, 2, of course. And uh, uh, so, it depends on how many times you wind the origin as you uh, take K uh, from uh, over the Brill 1 zone, entire Brill 1 zone. Uh, you have to do it again in order to have another winding and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, the Z2 invariant of course, is the uh, quantum spin hall insulator that we have seen recently. Okay. So, this is quantum spin hall insulator Ken Milley model is um, uh, this uh, corresponds to the Z2 invariant. Okay. So, we need to identify the topological invariant that is uh, important uh, for a particular case uh, and that particular case will be decided by the symmetry of the Hamiltonian that is uh, whether this, uh, the Hamiltonian has 
all of time reversal, particle hole and chiral symmetry or it does not have uh, one of them, it does not have two of them and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, the topological invariants are classified like this. Uh, so, this is only shown uh, in dimensions 1, 2 and 3. Uh, of course, in this particular case, we have uh, looked at uh, only 1 and 2 dimensional uh, materials so far. So, this is uh, the our domain so far. Okay. Uh, so, the symmetric groups are present here. So, there is a A3 a1, BDI and so on and so forth. There are these, uh, the topological invariants are in 1D uh, 0, which means that there is no topological invariance. It is topologically trivial. Uh, it does not have any topological properties. In uh, 2 dimension, it has uh, the Z, which is a churn number. A3, uh, 1 dimension, it has Z and 2 dimension, it is uh, uh, 0 and so on and then AI, BDI and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, these are the topological invariants and uh, where are we interested in? Uh, we are interested in uh, say for example, uh, we are interested in uh, the uh, IQHE that is uh, integer quantum Hall effect or quantized Hall effect that we have studied and uh, if you look at that, uh, uh, that has uh, no symmetry at all. So, it, it forms into the A class. Okay. So, it forms into the A class which has no symmetry, it has no time reversal symmetry because of the magnetic field being present and it has no um, charge conjugation symmetry, it is a completely disordered material and there will be no chiral symmetry as well. So, it, it forms falls into the A class which is here and uh, these uh, A class if you look at it uh, here then the A class uh, has uh, in 2D this is uh, the Z invariant and this is your IQHE and the Z invariant is uh, of course identified with the churn number. Okay. Uh, what about um, the SSH model? So, the SSH model is here. So, uh, so this is the SSH model and the Kitaev P wave chain with spinless fermion. So, this is SSH, uh, let us just write SSH to begin with, we will talk about the Kitaev. So, this is SSH and uh, what is the topological invariant is a winding number which is also a z invariant just like a churn number okay and um, we'll just talk about uh, the kitaev in just a moment let's talk about um, the quantum spin hall so quantum spin hall effect uh, that's the z2 invariant you know very well that that's the so there's a z invariant there's a z invariant and that's a z2 invariant which we have discussed elaborately uh, for a system with uh, time reversal symmetry. So, that is A2. So, uh, let us just go back and see what A2 is. A2 has a time reversal equal to minus 1. These are really the T square values. Okay. Uh, so, T square values in fact, they are written Tc, but they are the squares of this. This is minus 1 because of the reason uh, that this is with a spin. So, the with spin it is i sigma y into k, uh, k being the complex conjugation and it has no other symmetry. There is no particle hole symmetry, there is no chiral symmetry and so on. So, this uh, falls into the A2 class and if you go here, you see that the A2 class has a topological invariant which is a Z2 invariant and that is the QSH. Okay. So, um, now let us come to the Kitaev model. There is a, a dichotomy uh, or rather there is an ambiguity uh, present in this Kitaev thing. So, Kitaev, um, if we uh, talk about the Kitaev chain with uh, P wave superconducting uh, correlations um, and uh, we talk about spinless particles. Suppose we do not talk about electrons at all. So, we talk about spinless particles with uh, P wave correlations, superconducting correlations. Then it falls into the BD1 class. Okay. It has same symmetries as the Kitaev model and just to go back and forth. So, it is all of the symmetries being present that is there is a time reversal symmetry, there is a charge conjugation symmetry and then there is a chiral symmetry as well. Okay. So, it is the same thing as uh, 
the BDI class and then BDI class uh, will be characterized in one dimension by a Z invariant and which is saw that um, we have denoted the topological invariant as the winding number for that particular problem. Okay? But however, there is also true that if you talk about uh, electrons and then you have to talk about spin. Okay? And if you need to include spin, then you actually can talk about S wave superconductor. You do not need to talk about P wave superconductivity. You can also talk about P wave superconductivity, but uh, you can talk about S wave superconductivity. But then you need to make a spin polarization in order to talk about only one, uh, you know, kind of spin being there. And then there are these uh, other things such as uh, spin orbit coupling being present, etc. That is uh, it is uh, usually studied with S wave uh, superconducting correlations. And then of course, because you need a magnetic field, there is no time reversal invariance and then you are not uh, really there, you are there in this thing where it is only particle hole symmetry uh, because of the P wave superconducting correlations, neither chiral symmetry nor uh, time reversal symmetry and that is uh, where you have a D class and the D class is uh, represented by a Z2 invariant. Okay? So, this is uh, so, I will write SSH and uh, spinless Kitaev and here spin full Kitaev. That is a D class, uh, but you see that the topological invariant is Z2 and uh, not equal to you know Z. So, uh, these are some of the uh, things that we have you know discussed uh, during uh, the course um, and um, in some of the cases there are uh, we can write down uh, the Hamiltonian as uh, say for example, H equal to uh, D dot sigma and so on and then you know uh, in 1 D and then sigma denotes the Pauli matrices they do not denote spin, but they denote other degrees of freedom that is why sigma is uh, sometimes called a pseudo spinner and um, in uh, sort of uh, the quantum hall effect uh, we have uh, denoted with the churn number the topological invariant and uh, in um, for example ssh kitaev let's just stick to uh, spinless particles at this moment so we have done and then we have done uh, so this z invariant then these are winding numbers which are also Z invariant. And then we have done a, a quantum spin hall phase uh, which uh, is actually uh, the Z2 invariant. Okay. So, this is in 2D, this is in 1D we have done and this is again in 2D graphene that we have done. Okay? So, there are uh, various um, such classifications that exist. So, if you look at the table and uh, you know what symmetries are present in a given Hamiltonian, uh, then uh, you identify the symmetry class of the material and from this table you can read out the topological invariant and uh, if you know how to calculate it like for all these cases we have shown how to calculate the topological invariant uh, then you are more or less you know th that is about uh, the classification of materials. Okay. One last thing uh, to talk about there is something called a bot periodicity and um, uh, you see that it is always written up till 8 of course, we were now talking about 0, 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3 dimensions. Now, if you write it from 0 to 8 the bot periodicity says that uh, everything off from the ninth dimension onwards it starts repeating. So, the periodicity is uh, from 0 to 8 this 9 classes is again the same things, but uh, of course, in uh, dimensions which are very large these are of course, uh, you cannot have materials present in this uh, uh, like fourth dimension or fifth dimension, but they are 
mathematical uh, dimensions which uh, identify the different topological invariants and it, it says that uh, till 8 it uh, sort of it carries on and then of course everything gets repeated from 9th onwards. So, 9 is same as 0 and 10 is same as 1 and so on and so forth. Okay, that is called as a bot periodicity. That is not very important for us, but uh, uh, what is important for us is to uh, have a comprehensive understanding of uh, a certain material and uh, uh, if we can write down a Hamiltonian, then uh, we should be able to uh, know the symmetries of the Hamiltonian and from the symmetries, um, just the simple symmetries of T and C. And of course, another one which is uh, a multiplication or a product of uh, T and C, we know uh, that uh, which uh, uh, you know symmetric classification does the material fall in and we can calculate the, uh, the topological invariant and that will tell you that whether the uh, material has topological properties uh, uh, or, or it may not have topological properties. It may be a simple uh, a band insulator or just a, a, a normal superconductor uh, which is uh, well known. But uh, whether uh, you know the, uh, the edge modes or the surface modes they contribute to the conductivity only or the transport properties only in that case uh, the material is supposed to be uh, topological otherwise it is termed as trivial. Thank you.